Hello everybody, this is Laura with Busy Bee Farms and today um, we wanted just to kind of show you a little bit of what we're doing. It's get, it's May and it is time to um, get the ground and our plants in and all kinds of things, but we also have our meat birds that we've wanted to update you on them too. Um, we moved them out this past week. They, they were four and a half weeks old when we moved them out. We were a little later getting them moved out because we had to fix our chicken tractor. We wanted to put a little door on there and um, um, had to fix some supports on the tractor because it was kind of bowing a little bit because of the width of it. Um, but they've been out here outside, let's see, maybe four days now and they are doing really good. Um, so we just wanted to be able to show those to you. They are here in this chicken tractor. They still, at this point, they have plenty of room to, to walk around and move and do what they need to do. <clears throat> but they're growing and getting really, really big. They will be five weeks old on tomorrow, which will be May 2nd. They will be five weeks old and they are doing really, really good. It's time probably for us to move them because we've had them on this, it was really tall grass. And um, so we've had them on this really tall grass for those few days. And so it's about time for us to move them to fresh pasture. How many weeks until we? Well, well, we usually process them, I think about eight, eight yeah. weeks, depending on, you know, our schedule and things like that. So, so um, but <clears throat> do what? It's about the week I get out of school. Kind of, yep, yep. So anyway, um, just wanted to show you them um, and that they're growing and doing really well. Usually by the last few weeks, they start really taking off. They eat tons of feed and drink lots of water and get really, really big quickly in those last few weeks. So we'll start seeing that happen here pretty soon. But this is where they are now. And um, we had three, um, three layers um, that we had too and we moved them out to uh, a chicken tractor um, with one of our other hens that had gotten injured um, over a year ago and um, something happened to her foot um, it's gotten a lot better but we had isolated her so she wouldn't get picked on by the other um, hens in the coop um, one other thing side note wanted to show you this I noticed this week <clears throat> that my blueberry plants, they had, one of them, one of my plants, had blooms on them and that I, it looks like I'm going to have a few blueberries this year. So that's pretty awesome. And um, I wanted to, to just show that to you. So we, we um, there's, still, there's still one little flower right here but all of these little places right here were where flowers were and right here you can see that it's starting to take shape into a blueberry so that is super exciting i think this is the second year that we've had we've tried these blueberry bushes so so that's that's really awesome and then this right here is the muscadine vine i just wanted to show you that it has really just you know um, bloomed out uh, with its leaves and taken over the trellis really good um, we just need to get us a companion muscadine so vine on it too? no they just have a trellis you see because it's a vine it has to have a place to go so anyway just wanted to share that with you and we're gonna walk back up here to the top and um, we'll show you our three little hens that we have um, they are buff Orpingtons um, we were gonna get some Rhode Island Reds but um, they were not available at the local co-op at the time that we got these chickens and so we got uh, we actually got four baby buffs, one um, but one of them did die. It was kind of like a little runt, and it just didn't kind of it didn't want to grow, and it was little. And I, I maybe something was wrong with it, but it didn't survive. But we have three, and very very healthy and growing. So here is the chicken that I was talking about um, that had 
something happened to her foot and every once in a while you'll still see her kind of limp but she still gets around she's actually been laying a few eggs now and then she's part of an older group of chickens that we had I, she's probably four or five years old um in that batch of our very first group of chickens that we had here and we so got him, uh, we got her from Green Day, Nick, no, charlie. Green Day charlie yeah yeah so um and then you can see the little babies back there there they come there's those three little babies and she's been such a good good big hen to help take care of them and that there they are back there those three little girls and so that we're gonna just probably keep them in here for a little while till we know that they're big enough to to make it through with the the big crowd so um but the the rest of what we're doing today is hanging our cattle panels and um that's what uh david and matthew are out here trying to get ready for is to um, hang our cattle panels um they're putting up the middle tea post to help support the middle of the cattle panel um so that's what they're down there doing right now um matthew and i we did the other tea post um this past week during the week in a, some spare time that we had and so now they're down there trying to finish up what we need to get done to hang those paddles panels so they have we actually got a new post driver because the other one i actually forget what piece started breaking but there was a piece that started breaking and uh broke off and so <clears throat> we had kind of rigged it to where it would stay together so he could work and use it but we decided to invest in a newer one and this one seems to be a little stronger it is not near as heavy um not near as loud as far as the motor goes so david is very very happy with it enough t posts to do that one more row remember i talked about doing that one more row for my um butternut squash i mentioned i mentioned about it but um i don't know the particulars so the other post driver we had the housing that the motor attaches to the driver busted and we were mostly i was using it 
for driving grounding rods at work. So I went back and I watched the video of Seven and Care. Uh, Sarah and Kevin. Sarah and Kevin at Living Traditions. And I ordered this post driver. It's the Rhino Pro Series uh, GD40, um, I think it is. I'm pretty sure. GX. No, it's got the Honda GX35 oh. motor on it. Oh, okay. But the actual driver, I think, is the uh, GD or GP40. Um, and it's done really good. It's lighter. It's easier to start. And it drives really good. I didn't know so, we got a new one. It is a little uh, cold-natured when you first start it up. But it does really good. So, um, but this one is 100% made in the United States. And the, um, the driver portion has a lifetime warranty. The motor, I think Honda carries a three-year warranty on it. It does not take mixed gas. It takes just straight gas. It's a four, uh, four uh, cylinder, or not four cylinder, four stroke. Four cylinder, I wouldn't be able to pick it up. But uh, it's, it's been a, a good driver so far. It's got an insert that goes in the bottom that I took out to drive the T-post for now. I uh, took it out, but it goes in for the grounding rod so it's easier to hold on to. You ready, Matthew? Yeah, you want... You want to skip a row, right? Um. Or do you want the very next row? I would skip a row. I, I think I would be okay with skipping a row. I don't think we did last year with our cucumbers, but I think it's a better idea. <clears throat> we skipped a row on everything. May, uh, maybe we did. Because you start getting cattle panels and you get that close and you won't be able to get down. Right. All right, so just flip the switch. It's easy to start. that was if that was a tree root or a rock or what but it stopped on something mm -hmm. and then it just cut right through it and kept going yeah so it's got to stay upright the only thing that i've disliked about this one is it did not come with a case uh like a uh, a case you know to keep it in and they say it has to stay upright, which I can understand because the oil would uh, seep up past the, the piston or whatever. But uh, that's the only thing, the only downside that I found to it. It's lighter, one man can handle it. 
and it's easy to start and you know we drive eight foot ground rides for work <laughs> and i've had no issues with them you know we drive an eight foot ground ride two foot into the ground so when we're done the top of it's two foot deep and it's done it's done great so i have no complaints about it whatsoever other than it doesn't have a case <coughs> excuse me to my knowledge there's not a case to purchase for it so i've been keeping it in the case that the other one come in and i'm probably and it doesn't fit right so i'm probably just going to build me like a a wooden case because i keep it on my trailer all the time because we're using it almost daily well i won't say daily but i use it weekly for sure all right you ready olivia okay so we're putting up the cattle pet cattle panels we've got two rows already um we're doing the third row now and these are for tomatoes um this is primarily what we're doing for our tomatoes so that they have a way to trellis and we have them marked i believe matthew and i decided on 15 inches off the ground and um so there's some spacing before they actually reach the panel and um, so it's about 15 inches and then we will use these little clips to tie our tomato plants to trellis them against the the cattle panel and david is using some heavy duty zip ties <laughs> harbor freight to secure it oh okay. they seem like it so he's Here using those to um secure it to the uh, t-post and then olivia's coming back behind to cut the extra off <clears throat> and we're doing that we have one on each end and then in the middle of the cattle panel and then one at the other end and then when he comes down with the next cattle panel then he will overlap it and zip tie those together like that right there she's just staying in there that's where they over lapped it hurry up olivia huh? you're, you're moving slow well excuse moving me moving slow what do you want me to do can be a help and hold wow. this because it's hard to hold both of these together while your daddy gets the well you're just standing there and talking Yes. That's not no help. Just standing and talking. I gave you a job. After you help, gave me all these to hold. Yeah. So they just overlap just a little bit. And then I just go around the T post, around both panels, getting the crossbar in between. And all we're wanting to do is hold them over where they're tight right here against these little notches on the T-post. And then that will hold them in place. Every time. I don't know that there's anything that's exactly the same every time. This. This is done the exact same way every time. Well. Here you go. She's getting these little... And I do want to do a type of trellis a little bit just to support my peppers this yeah. year, but I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do that. Um, so, I will be doing something.
here. I gotta have enough to go to the key place. And there comes Olivia. She's getting faster. Good job, Olivia. Good job. There you go. Okay. Stick them in my pocket. I do everything, don't I? I already got my hands full. Hey, oh, what? That hurts. Thank you very much. All right, hand it to me. I guess that's the trash pocket. I love the look of the garden when the cattle panels get just up. It just looks so pretty. Once you get your garden laid out and looks so nice. And You've got the holes cut. As long as you kind of keep up with what you're doing, it's, it doesn't take that long to put it back together no. the next year. Mm -mm. Once you know so. how it's going to go. I'm going to get this stuck down. Okay. Those was all I saw. These are different. <coughs> Rather than going through the back seat. But I love how it looks and how clean it looks and and then when all the tomatoes grow up those panels and trellis on it and everything's green. It's so pretty. I've got to show y'all before I let y'all go that my flowers have started blooming. I have cosmos that have bloomed. I have some flocks that have, have bloomed. And then I have zinnias, not zinnias, marigolds that have bloomed. And, um, you have to get right up behind I'm so sorry. <clears throat> and then uh, my calendula, it looks like it's starting to get ready to flower and, um, I still have lavender that has survived. So I will have to show you all those things. I'm so, so proud and excited of that. I've never really grown flowers other than marigolds from seed. And so um, it just makes my heart happy to see things like that grow. <laughs> Hello ladies. Hello ladies. How are you girls? How are you pretty girls? I know it's getting gardening time. Yeah, y'all get extra food when we have garden time, don't we? Yeah. Hey ladies. Does your mother talk to your animals like that? Or is it just mine? <laughs> She talks to her cats that way. But she doesn't have chickens. Do what? She's yoda. Oh yeah.
So there will be one, two, three, four, five panel, five, five rows for tomatoes. Um, <clears throat> there's usually 18 to 20 holes in each row. So um, most of the time it's close to 100 tomatoes that we have growing on those five cattle panels. Um, yeah, we do have to get the ground cover um, blown off, swept off, that kind of thing. Um, but there will be five, five rows of tomatoes. And in between the rows is where we usually put our peppers, and that's what we will do. Um, and I've, I'm kind of thinking that I might do like a little, a small steak at each end of each row. And I saw this type of trellis, it's called a Florida weave. And I've never used it before, but, um, huh? Well, you said we kind of used it, but we didn't weave in and out like that man did. Okay, well then I don't remember that. The corn blew over. Oh, well yeah, but for the corn to help that, but just as far as a trellis for something to grow against, we've not used it like that. No. When exactly. The corn blew over though, that's what I did. Okay. Because I stood them back up and I weaved. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like a stake on each end and then you tie like a string on one end and then you weave the string back and forth through your plants, tie it off at the other end and then you tie another string and weave the opposite way and that creates a support. So that is what I have in mind that I think I might like to do and see if that works. Um, Cause I feel like my um, jalapeno plants usually get pretty bushy like. Um, and need some support because if they do set a lot of fruit, which we pray and hope they do, um, then they need some support. And uh, um, so I'd like to try to do that and see how that works this year. Um, <clears throat> we will have a row of cucumbers. Um, so that will be one of the trellised rows. And then the next row, which we've usually done two rows of cucumbers, but we end up having so many cucumbers that we can't harvest them all in a timely fashion to process them. So we're gonna do one row of cucumbers and try to keep that up for our pickles and any relish that we make. And then the next row, I got um, some mini butternut squash. And so I'm going to plant that on the next trellis for them to grow on. And, um, We'll see how that goes. That's what I think I'm going to do for that. And I'm not sure what we're going to do in those empty rows that don't have a um, trellis. I'm not sure about those. Um, what I'm going to do there yet, I haven't completely decided. Um, but, of course, we have green beans to plant and zucchini and squash to plant. Um, so I have to figure that part out. We have not put down the last ground cover, which is right over there where the green um, um, water hose is. So we still have that ground cover to put down. And then um, towards the end of that is where we put our really big trellis where the rattlesnake pole beans go. And um, I loved those last year, so we are gonna do those again. And uh, that's that's kind of the plan for this garden that's what we do just about every year what olivia <clears throat> and throughout the garden i'm going to put flowers i always put like some marigolds but i also have calendula which is also a type of fragrant flower um has medicinal purposes and things like that too and um i'm gonna put those out here and some zinnias and sunflowers we have several varieties of sunflowers yes ma'am uh, several varieties of sunflowers um, that we will be putting at um, hoping to put some here and hoping to put some in the back garden as well and maybe in a field so that's kind of the plan and that's what we're out here doing because next weekend um is mother's day may 8th and after that point which 
well, really truly now we probably could go ahead and plant because I really feel like that we are out of the dangers of any kind of frost but I'm going to wait until after the end to put my plants in the ground. I'm trying to harden off my tomato plants right now and my peppers um, outside. I have them sitting outside. They were outside for a couple of hours this week and um, I'm going to uh, leave them out for a few hours today. And there's a chance of rain, I think, just about every day this week. So I don't know what the opportunity for that to be for getting them outside and things like that with winds and storms. Hopefully we won't have anything like that that I can still get them outside. So they'll be ready to go. <clears throat> okay, so here are my flowers. Here are my marigolds, and then the white and the uh, pinkish, purplish, reddish are my cosmos, and they look so good, so good. I am so proud of those. They look so pretty. Um, and then right here are my zinnias, and you can see they're getting ready to kind of set a bloom. And then my um, lavender is starting to really take off as well. I'm so excited. I have not been able to do that. Um, we have pansies and we have black eyed Susans that have started there. And then my phlox is this purple flower. And there's several of those that are about to bloom. Um, my calendula, um, they're starting to, to take on a flower down in there as well. Um, there's my snapdragons and some more zinnias and then um, over here is my vine that the black-eyed Susan vine and it's just continuing to grow and I'm gonna put those in a bigger pot and with a trellis behind them um, and see kind of what they do I'm so excited um, to try something different that's not a vegetable plant. Um, I still have like my basil here that I've not set out. And this is my chamomile that I really need to get planted. And um, that is lim lemon bee balm. Um, that is also supposed to be a, a good medicinal type of uh, plant to have. Um, and I think that's about it. I've got some lettuce that has come up some. Um, Merlot lettuce. And this is the butter head or butter crunch. I can't remember. Uh, I think it's a butter crunch lettuce um, that is there. Um, here are beets that are still trying to come up. I really don't know if any of those things are going to do anything now that um, it's starting to really get warm. Um, but my carrots have come up in my green stalk. I have some overwintered carrots that are this tall in my green stalk and some more lettuce there. My sage plant there. Um, my cilantro looks like it's getting ready to, to bolt and be done because it does not like hot weather at all. But that's kind of what's happening with my green stalk and and then all my flowers and things. I've got my tomato plants and peppers out today. Um, some of my tomatoes have gotten kind of tall, a little bit leggy, but you can plant them deep and, and they will just grow roots out from their stem. Their stems have these little hairy little uh, spots on them and those will become roots. Um, if you were to just plant that deep and it'll just make that a stronger plant um, So that is these are all my tomato plants here. I have one two three four five five and a half trays of those all different varieties and then my two 
pepper plants over here. The wind might not be doing them a service today. They don't come back as easy. You gotta be ginger with them. So they might be quickly going back inside for a while. Um, but trying to, and I've had a fan on them, so we'll just, we'll just have to see. Um, the one thing I wanted to show you, and uh, I got to find the tray that it's in. Oh, it's this one right here. So I planted some pumpkin seeds that a man from church gave us and they were old seeds so he wasn't sure if they would germinate or not and so i put one in each in like like a six pack small six six pack of um um cell cells and and with dirt and just tried to see if they would germinate and nothing really came up and i thought oh you know it's just not good good seed anymore and that happens as they get older and things and so anyway, I just dumped the dirt. I found most of the seeds that I felt like I planted and, and we just dumped the dirt and reused it. And so then just a couple days ago, I looked up and I saw this plant in there with my tomato plant. And I'm like, that is some kind of melon. That's what the leaves look like when it's a melon. And so I think that it's one of those Kushaw pumpkin seeds that was given to me. So we're gonna see what happens with it. But I thought that is just so neat. It just surprises, plants just surprise you. So that's kind of what's happening here with these plants. Um, I really don't like the wind today and what they're doing, but like I said, I think that they will still be okay and they need to be outside some anyway. So. Um, let's see if they're done. It looks like they're probably getting about on the last row. They are. <clears throat> and then everything but the, um, what we call the volleyball net, that holds the, the uh, pole beans will be up. And so we've accomplished a lot in about an hour and a half. But just to stand back here and look, I just love it. It's so pretty, so pretty. And when you get everything climbing on it and growing, it's so nice. And the ground cover, if I just cannot say enough about the ground cover, it is such, using that word game changer, it really is such a game changer to use the ground cover to suppress the weeds. And you don't have to worry about that when you're doing, you know, your vegetable garden and you're spending more time to look at the fruit and take care of the plant versus always picking weeds, which is never enjoyable. So it's an investment, but we've had this for a few years now, still holding up just fine. And um, it, once you, you get things along the way and you have everything, then, you know, it's, it, it's stuff that will last, like these panels and these T-posts. They're investments in the beginning, but they last, and it's something that's repurposed every year. So, like I said, just can't say enough about the ground cover. It's definitely worth the investment. Last row? Yep. Yep. <clears throat> awesome. And then I'm going to oh, goodness. Olivia's such a team player most times. I'm not. <laughs> that was it really was. Y'all really all probably know from our comments that Olivia is not the most excited one about gardening. She likes the food that comes from it, but um, the work sometimes not her idea but she's here she's outside she's helping she's learning maybe one day she might be thankful Matthew's always me? thankful what are you saying about me? I said maybe one day you'll be thankful for all these things that we made you come out and do and that you learned how to do
This is uh, kind of what it's looking like, you know, just like it does every year. But um, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows, three panels wide. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven T posts per row. So you can use just regular cattle fencing, cattle uh, wire, like this stuff over here. And we've done this. However, this is, um, it's much more flimsy. And if you can't afford the cattle panels, because I, I totally understand this is expensive, but it is an investment into your gardening and into your um, homesteading, farming, your family. So if you can afford to do the cattle panels, they're much more um, sturdy and easier to deal with. The cattle wire is more flimsy and you can't quite get it tight. And the T-post, they do great holding upright, but they don't do really good pulling against them this way and that way because they'll, they just kind of, they pull over. They're not, they're not designed to hold pressure this way. They hold pressure this way. So, uh, the T-posts do really good. This does really good. If you can't afford the cattle panels, the cattle wire will work. Just know that as you get stuff on it, it wants to lean. It wants to, you know, sag. And it's harder to uh, to deal with. So, uh, Laura asked for this. And we were able to do some extra jobs to get the money to buy these. And we done a little bit at a time. And this is what we have now. So, it's turned out really good. Does this make you happy? Yes, it does. I told them it makes my heart happy to see this. Well, there you go. <laughs> so, that's why that's why we do it. So, uh, it does make the gardening easier. Laura can come out here and do this while I'm not here and uh, at uh, work. So, um, we've got one more row to do, but it'll be a little bit later. It's the one we call the volleyball net. Uh, that she does her uh, rattlesnake, pole rattlesnake pole beans and they get to 10 foot high I mean we put these 10 foot T post in and then I, I put the cattle panels up above those and last year the uh, the, um, the beans, beans yep. grew past the top of the cattle panels which was probably 12 foot tall and it would grow up past it and kind of fall over. So uh, anyways, uh, we thank you for stopping by and watching and take care and God bless.